Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about um, engine fundamentals. And the first thing that I want to talk about is a tiny bit about thermodynamics. And loads of people have just switched off right now. <laughs> Uh, thermodynamics isn't that hard to understand. One of the, the one of the most basic laws of thermodynamics is that heat moves from hot things to cold things until there's an equilibrium. I.e., a hot thing will pass its energy to a cold thing until they both are the same temperature, and that's the equilibrium. It's as simple as that. But what the hell does you know thermodynamics and stuff have to do with engines? Well, petrol engines, diesel engines. Steam engines, jet engines, they're all what we call heat engines. They, um, When you look back and trace back where you get your horsepower from and your torque from, it all comes back down to combustion, uh, which combustion is oxidising of a fuel which releases heat. It's an exothermic reaction. So the, one of the first things I want to talk about is thermal gradients and how important that is for an engine. So, the first thing we need to get into our heads is that a fuel has um, chemical energy stored inside it. Um, all the dinosaurs that died and plants and what have you that got crushed and whatever by the earth turned into crude oil and all the energy that they extracted from the sun, that was the main source of where that energy came from, gets stored in their bodies as chemical energy um, just like it does inside yourself or just like it does inside a battery. Um, after all that pressure and heat, blah blah blah, crude oil, we um, distill the crude oil, we do fractional distillation, get petrol out of it, or diesel, or whatever your fuel may be, and then we oxidise that fuel, which is basically, we burn it, it's combustion. And energy is released, which is great for us, because we use that energy to increase the pressure in a contained cylinder with a petrol and diesel engine, piston, and piston engines, and that pressure is then used to force the piston down and we transfer that from linear motion into rotational motion. So that's a really quick brief. Ta -da! Um, and thermal gradients are very important. So what is a thermal gradient? Well, the one thing you need to know about fuel is it doesn't matter how much fuel you burn. If you burn a litre or half a million litres in one go, um, there will be a maximum temperature that can be achieved. If you just keep on adding more petrol to a fire, it doesn't get hotter and hotter and hotter until it melts through the core of the earth. Um, there is only so much energy that can be released out of a fuel. And we call this the calorific value, and I'll do a video on all what all that means. But basically, you can only get so much energy that's temped up inside um, as chemical energy, as potential energy inside that fuel. Um, so, what thermal gradients have to do is, is it's the condition from what you put into an engine to what your product is after combustion. So, basically, you have what you call T1, and then you have T2. So, T1 is your temperature that you start with. So, let's just say that it's a 20 degree day, the ambient temperature outside is 20 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, and your fuel is that temperature in your tank. The air going into the engine is that, you know, is that temperature. We then compress it, which increases the temperature. But we'll, that's a bit more complicated and later on. That's another video. But we compress it, then we ignite the fuel, which is basically just reacting it with oxygen, an oxidizer. That's the oxygen that's in the air, and the uh, oxygen breaks down that long chain molecule and energy is released. Excess energy is released, it's called an exothermic reaction, and this energy leaks out as heat. So basically, and generally in an engine, you're looking at about 800 degrees Celsius. That's how we're just going to use that number, that's about right. So we've gone from 20 degrees C to 800 degrees C. So if you plot that on a graph, um, and I know here comes the dreaded graphs, but it's really simple to understand. And I wish I had my bloody board rubber. It's disappeared on me. So if we plot this on a graph, we've got time at the bottom. We've got temperature. We've got time. And then we started down here at 20. 
and then we ramp up to 800. Now there's a relationship between a temperature increase of a gas inside a contained volume, so just say it's this, there's our contained volume, there's a direct relationship, a um, proportional relationship between the rise in temperature and the rise in pressure. You double the temperature inside the same volume and you will double the pressure. And pressure is just how much energy the atoms inside have, um, bombarding themselves into the wall of your container. And um, obviously if you give them more energy, which is in the form of heat, um, you give them more energy, then they've got more momentum, so when they hit stuff they apply a greater force to your surface area. All basic stuff, you know what I mean? So if you increase the temperature from here to here, like this, your pressure will follow just like that, proportionally, obviously not with the same numbers. So this is what we call a gradient, obviously, you know, this is like... This is a gradient. You know what I mean? Like if you were going down a hill. That's an awesome looking car, well done. No wonder I do more bikes. So obviously this is a gradient. We have a gradient to this. Now let's just imagine that your fuel was uh, 200 degrees. Let's just say your fuel was 200 degrees. So we'll put that there. 200 degrees. And your air going in was 200 degrees. Then your gradient would still, you'd still reach 800 degrees because that's the temperature that we get from combusting that amount of fuel with that amount of air. But you can see that we've got, the gradient isn't as steep anymore. Um, and your pressure increase from here to here won't be as much. It won't be as, as much. <laughs> it won't be as high. We want the greatest increase in pressure that we can get out of that contained volume. So this is why pressure gradients are very important, and this is why we keep engines cool. It's it's a lot of things. It, you know, it covers a lot of things. It's how well the oil can survive temperature. It's how um, the components will swell and tolerances will be chewed up, um, and clearances will be chewed up, and what have you. Um, obviously, we don't want to run an engine too hot because of all these other things. But this is the reason why you want to keep your engine cool. This is also one of the reasons why we're using the coolers. It's one of the reasons. It's also to do with air density and what have you. Um, on turbo engines and stuff like that, we want to try and make sure that the temperature going in is as low as possible so we can get um, the highest, the, you know, the steepest gradient so we can get more temperature. There's a bigger temperature change, which means there's going to be a bigger pressure change. And if the pressure change is bigger, then we can um, uh, extract more power. It's as simple as that. Oh, sorry, I had a brain fart then. Um, so temperature gradients are very, very important. If we could chill this down to just say 150 degrees Celsius, the air going in and the fuel going in, and there wasn't any, you know, there wasn't any problems with that, like freezing and stuff like that. Um, this would be absolutely fucking wonderful. We'd have a massive gradient. You could see the difference, and you'd produce so much more power. So temperature gradients are really, really important when it comes to engines. Um, a lot of the time, the difference in temperature on a cold winter's morning, and you can feel there's a bit more power in your engine, that's generally down to air density, but there is a, an aspect of that that is down to temperature gradients. You know, if you can have a bigger... Uh, rate of change, a, a steeper rate of change, a bigger difference between your T1 and your T2, then you are going to get more power from that. It's as simple as that. So I hope that all made sense and how important temperature gradients are. And uh, we'll do some more videos on the very, very, f the, you know, the engine fundamentals and what have you. And I'll uh, see you in a bit.